when K-Line brought the circus to town on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. Hello again, this is Mike with another episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. It seems that as long as major touring circuses like the Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey existed, circus trains were an integral part of the institution. Circus trains provided a colorful and exciting means of transporting tons of equipment, hundreds of cast and crew, and of course, the large collection of circus animals from town to town across the USA. In 1993, K-Line trains brought this excitement to life in O-Gage with the large and colorful K-1311 Ringling Brothers Barnum & Bailey Circus Set. This set was all about play value from the colorful smoking and whistling 464 steam locomotive at the front to the lighted caboose with Ringling Brothers logo on the rear to the freight cars in between to the additional three rings full of performers, props, and snack stands this was sure to delight ladies, gentlemen, and children of all ages. If you are unaware of K-Line Trains, the firm operated from 1975 to 2006, making a variety of trains from starter sets to fine-scale models. The firm peaked in popularity in the early 2000s, but due to complex legal issues, it was forced to dissolve. The K-Line name became part of Lionel Trains in 2006, and the line was later phased out altogether by 2011. Far from being a scale model, this set evoked the spirit and much of the tooling of classic Louis Marks and Company trains of the 1950s. Let's take a closer look at this neat set. The K3104-464 Hudson is a direct descendant of the Marks number 1829 steamer. It's an oft-repeated bit of train collecting lore that K-Line founder Maury Klein and his warehouse manager found the dies for the Marks number 1829 and the similar number 333 steamer in an abandoned, dilapidated, roofless warehouse near Buffalo in a snowstorm sometime in the 1980s. True or not, K-Line invested significant time and money repairing and upgrading these dies before reintroducing the classic steamers in 1993. Early versions of this Circus Hudson were numbered 3004, but this was quickly changed as the 3000 series numbers were generally used for the 462 Pacific steamers derived from the Marks 333 tooling instead. These steamers were upgraded to 1990s standards with new can motors, three position electronic reverse units, smoke, twin traction tires, and with an honest to goodness air whistle in the tender. Although K-Line's proprietary whistle controllers were required so as not to infringe on Lionel patents. These are smooth runners operating on 027 and larger curves, and they are geared slower than most starter set locomotives, so they're less likely to fly off the dining room table at full speed. The low gear ratio, low center of gravity, and traction tires makes these surprisingly good pullers. Let's take a look under the hood. Two Phillips screws on either side of the steam chest hold the shell in place. Then, you must carefully remove the eccentric rod screw and free the shell from the side rods. I partially replaced the screw to keep the rods from falling off while handling the steamer. With the shell removed, you can see that there's really little reason to remove the shell. Here's the can motor and the worm gear, Here's the circuit board for the reverse sequence headlight and smoke unit. And up front, here's the small smoke unit and the offset headlight. The headlight is one of my complaints on this steamer. It not only lacks a lens, but it's also slightly off center in order to accommodate the smoke unit. Since this engine generally operates very well below full throttle, the headlight is often very dim as well. Also, the suede smoke units in these early K-Line steamers tend to fail. If you have an older model with a still functioning spoke unit, consider yourself lucky. With little room to spare in the boiler, there's no bellows or fan to enhance the flow of smoke, so even when these were working, they're quite anemic in smoke generation. Another downside of these steamers is that the metal eccentric of the original Marx models was replaced by these plastic versions. If the valve gear should encounter a bind of any kind, the pressure can cause the piece to literally explode. Check the valve gear for any lateral play, 
and use pliers to tighten any loose rivets as needed and make absolutely certain that the eccentric screw is tightly secure. The rest of the rolling stock is similarly uh, similar, 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 similar. The rest of the rolling stock is similarly upgraded marks and Kusan tooling, all upgraded with operating Lionel compatible couplers and Lionel MPC lookalike trucks. The K5131 boxcar features opening doors unlike its marks ancestors, as does the K5217 circus stock car. The K6537 gondola with four crates appears to be based on original Kusan tooling, as does the K66604 flat car, which now has brackets added to each end to carry mark size billboards advertising the circus. Uh, but this doesn't work very well. After about two to three laps around the layout, the billboards fall off. Uh, use them on the layout instead. The colorful K6165 caboose is also derived from original Kusan tooling, but now features interior illumination and a metal ladder. If the bulb of the caboose should fail, do not attempt to remove the caboose shell for access. These are assembled with tab construction and are very difficult to separate without causing damage. Instead, squeeze the metal tabs of the bulb socket with pliers and remove the bulb assembly from the bottom of the caboose. A typical Marx or Lionel BA9 bayonet type bulb will work as a replacement. K9 starter sets often featured rolling stock with slightly oversized knuckles. These eliminated all play between the couplers and the tight fit can actually cause derailments on O27 curves. To fix this, a few swipes with a small file on the inside of the knuckle can improve the fit of the coupler. The set also features figures, props, and carts, all derived from original Mark's playset tooling. This particular set was a hand-me-down from a family member, so some parts are obviously missing. But you can still see that there was lots of play value in the original set. Track, a small black transformer, and K-Line whistle controller round out the set contents. There are two main types of K-Line whistle controllers. One receives its power from the transformer. The other has a separate wall outlet. If you can find the wall outlet type, you will have much better success in controlling these K-Line whistles. Between 1993 and 2006, K-Line offered several different circus trains, including several sets similar to this one, but with different colors. And some were led by a scale RS3. And even some others featured scale 72 foot passenger cars. Since these sets appeal to both train collectors and circus collectors as well, box examples can demand premium prices. In May 2017, the age of the circus trains came to an end with the final performances of the original Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. Promoters have announced the return of the circus this fall, but without animals and without the distinctive trains. Well, we can bring the circus to town every day on our layouts with one of these classic K-Line sets. And maybe you too can bring the greatest show on earth to your three rail layout. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. And if so, please let your friends, neighbors, and especially YouTube know by liking it, sharing, subscribing, and leave us a comment. And don't forget to check the video description for links to some of the items I mentioned in this video. So keep up the thrills, chills, and spills on your railroad, and until next time, keep the trains running.